What is up, everybody? Jeremy Eisenfire here, and welcome back to the channel. And episode two of From, entitled The Kindness of Strangers, is here, and things are really starting to heat up now. Only two episodes in, but we are already getting a ton of new mysteries, suspense, questions, and some awesome new intriguing characters as well. And I cannot wait to dive into all of these new mysteries with everyone and find out exactly what is going on in this mysterious realm that our survivors find themselves in. Episode 2 picks up right where Episode 1 left off with Boyd finishing his climb to the top of the shaft and making his way into what appears to look like some type of medieval dungeon, maybe in some type of tower perhaps. And here we meet the newest character on the show, the mysterious old man that is chained up on the wall. And quickly we see when Boyd takes a look around that the old man was not alone, at least at one point. Because it looks like there are two other bodies that were previously chained to the wall that are nothing but skeletons now. So whatever is going on here, the old man is not the first victim to be held captive here. But clearly this old man has been here for a very long time and he is definitely at the end of his rope. Because the first thing that he asked Boyd to do is to put him out of his misery. Of which Boyd does not want to do, of course, especially after he sees his Marine Corps tattoo, as Boyd and his wife have both previously served. And the motto, leave no man behind, is definitely one that they live by. Up next, we get to the diner where Kenny and Donna are trying to keep a lid on things as some of the newer arrivals from the bus are going a little stir-crazy. They're clearly not buying what's going on, which is understandable. I mean, you arrive at this random small town and a bunch of people tell you you can't leave and there's monsters coming to kill you. You're probably not going to take that at face value. And then we cut over to Tabitha and Victor, who are making their way through the woods. And I was a little worried about them. I knew that they made it out of the cave, yes, but I knew that the sun was going to be going down soon, and they were still God knows where in the forest. But luckily, they end up making it out, and they make their way to one of Victor's safe houses, for lack of better term. An abandoned truck in the middle of the woods, and it seems like he's got some supplies stashed in there. With the exception of it not having a talisman, it's kind of the perfect place to hide out. Next, we see Jim, the bartender, and one of the newcomers from the bus that are still trapped under the rubble of Jim's house after it mysteriously collapsed. And basically, it's just Jim and the bartender trying to keep the new guy calm because they know what is coming, and unfortunately, the new guy has no idea what's going on, and uh, they're just trying to keep him calm because they know if they get found here, they are absolutely screwed with zero chance of defending themselves. But then we flash back to Boyd and the mysterious old man in the tower. And these really were the highlight scenes of the episode, for me personally. Uh, and this show is really just firing on all cylinders right now. The brilliance of From cannot be understated, and I really suggest everybody get out there and watch it. It's been a while since I've had that edge-of-your-seat feeling, and that feeling where you just never know what's going to happen next, and that's exactly what From delivers, and it's something that is missing from a lot of TV shows and movies nowadays. But getting back to the old man and Boyd, Boyd shows the old man the talismans that he happened to find in the woods that offer protection against the monsters. And this is where things start to get a little bit interesting, because this is where we get something confirmed that we had hinted at in Season 1. And that is, there is something out here that is much worse than the monsters. And the old man himself says that the monsters are, quote, just the tip of the spear. At the end of season one, when Boyd and Sarah enter into the woods to try and find a way out, Sarah gets one of her visions, or one of her messages, from the mysterious voices that are communicating with her. But this time, she describes it as being a little bit different. This time, it was a female voice. And we come later on to find out that it is most likely the voice of Boyd's dead wife. Who, the old man, happens to name drop later on, which is another mystery in and of itself. Then we start to hear a mysterious music box start to play. And it is very similar to the jukeboxes back at the diner. The thing just kind of turns on out of nowhere. Which apparently is an indication, at least to the old man, that whatever entities or whatever is holding him captive is apparently coming back. And the old man tells Boyd that he has to get out before the music stops playing. And then things start to get a little bit weird. Just as Boyd gets one of the old man's arms free, the music box stops playing. And this sends the old man into a little bit of a panic. And he says that they are out of time. And he proceeds to cut Boyd's arm and give his blood to Boyd. 
which is very strange in and of itself. And then we see later on, on the old man's arms, there are these weird parasites or something crawling underneath his skin. And this does not spell good news for Boyd. And Boyd has had it very rough as of late. Not only did he have the weird spider bites, but now he's got whatever these weird creatures are crawling underneath his skin. And let me know down in the comment section below, what exactly do you think is going on right here with Boyd? What exactly do you think are these creatures that Boyd is now infected with? And what kind of effect is it going to have on Boyd in the long run? Short thereafter, the old man seemingly dies, and then Boyd goes to make his way out of the door. And this is where things get even weirder. As soon as Boyd starts to take one step out of the door, he finds himself in the middle of the forest out of nowhere, surrounded by ruins that look an awful lot like the same tower that he was previously just in. And I had a few theories that went through my head when I first started seeing this. The first thing I thought was, could this whole thing have been one big hallucination from Boyd? Him being stuck in the shaft, him climbing up the shaft, him meeting the old man, being in that room. Could it all have been one big hallucination? And maybe right here is where his faraway tree took him the whole time. But then I started to notice that Boyd is still holding the torch and Boyd still has the cut on his arm. So whatever happened, he definitely really met that old man. And then I started to think maybe Boyd time traveled. And where Boyd is standing right now is exactly where that tower used to be. Because as I said, the ruins around Boyd look a lot like the tower that he was just in. But let me know what you guys think down below. What exactly happened to Boyd and what exactly was this whole thing with this mysteriously old man? Because clearly he really did meet Boyd because we're seeing the cut and the torch and we're seeing those creatures are still under Boyd's skin. And exactly how did the old man know Boyd's wife's name, Abby, when he asked, do you think Abby was right and that it is all just a dream? Which was definitely strange, and my first thought was, maybe, just like Sarah, maybe this old man can also hear some of the disembodied voices that seem to be trying to communicate with some of these survivors. But definitely let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section, what exactly is going on with this old man, and how exactly did he know about Boyd's wife, Abby? And basically, while all of this is going on, we see back at the town, our survivors are trying to keep a lid on things. They're trying to keep the newcomers from killing themselves because they clearly did not know what they stepped into. We did have a little bit of an incident at the diner when one of the newcomers gets their hands on Kenny's gun. But fortunately, Donna puts a swift end to that. And then we get back to our survivors who are trapped under the house. And unfortunately, we have to end up saying goodbye to our beloved bartender. Which, I suppose, if nothing else, does maybe put an end to the theory that it was his voice on the radio at the end of Season 1. I know that was a heavy fan favorite, that the bartender was one of the main suspects that was on the radio at the end of Season 1, telling Jim that his wife should not be digging that hole. But it looks like, ultimately, that was not the bartender. We also see Boyd making his way through the woods, guided by that mysterious dog who shows up just in the nick of time. And I can't be the only one that are getting major loss flashbacks here to Michael and the dog Vincent. But Boyd makes his way through the woods and eventually stumbles upon the same truck that Tabitha and Victor are hiding out in. And it looks like Elgin also makes his way to the same truck as well. And it looks like there are a bunch of monsters hot on his tail. But luckily they all make it inside the truck and Boyd just so happens to have that handy talisman on him so they are indeed safe for now. And we see the remainder of our survivors waiting it out until the morning. But overall, it was another very solid episode from an awesome show that is really making you think in the best possible way. And I am really looking forward to diving into some of these mysteries and finding out exactly what is going on in this mysterious town. I have a few theories as to what could potentially be happening with our survivors. And if you haven't already, definitely check out my recent Unraveling the Mysteries of From video, where I dive into some of the show's deepest mysteries. But that is going to do it for us today. Don't forget to hit that like on your way out, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications to stay up to date on all of our upcoming content, as we will be covering all things From. And don't forget to come hang out with us live every week for our live after show, where we dive into the show's deepest mysteries after each premiere.
And until next time, keep those talismans handy, and I want to thank everybody out there for watching, and we will see you on the next one.